So this video is on binomial expansion. So on the right is something called Pascal's triangle. And you need to become familiar with how this works for this chapter. In Pascal's triangle, it starts from the one at the top here. And each value below it is the value of the two numbers directly above that value added together. So for example, six here is made up of the two numbers directly above it on the left and the right added together, which is the three and the three. And then three plus three gives the six. So this is why the six exists. Another example is the five here, which is made up of the two values directly above it on the left and right added together, which is one and four. And one plus four gives the five. Another example is the 15 here, which is made up of the five and the 10 directly above it on the left and the right added together. It starts from the one up here, and then we basically treat all, other, uh, all of the blank values as zero, and it creates Pascal's triangle like this. Now, really quick, there are a couple of ways that we can define values on Pascal's triangle. The first way is we can do it by writing notation like this, n, R, where n on the top represents the row that the value is on and the r on the bottom represents how far along that row the value is. So the top row here is known as the zero row. We call it the zero row as it isn't really a row as it only has one number in it. This is known as the first row, this is known as the second row, this is known as the third row, and then so on. And then r represents how far along the row the value is. So if r is equal to 0, it's right at the start of the row here. It's 0 across, it's right at the beginning, so we consider this 0. 1 means that it's 1 across the row, 2 means that it's 2 across the row and three means that it's three across the row and so on. For uh, longer rows you can get four across uh, as well etc and, and longer um, things. So for example let's say that we need to find the value of three two. So to do this we need to look at Pascal's triangle and see what value is there for three two. So the top number is three so therefore it is going to be the third row. The top number indicates uh, the row, so therefore it's going to be the third row. And the bottom number represents how far along that row it's going to be. And as it's two, it's going to be two across. So it's going to be zero across here. Remember, this is not one across, this is zero across. Uh, we consider this zero across. This is going to be one across. And this is going to be two across and we're looking for two across so this is two across and therefore this is the value of three two three two is equal to three three two is the third row and the two across on the third row and that is equal to three let's do another example let's find the value of five one so it's going to be the fifth row so remember this is the zero row up here so it's going to be zero one two three four five this is the fifth row and it is going to be the one across so it's going to be zero across here and then one across here so therefore it's going to be this value here so five one is equal to five it is one across the fifth row Let's do one more example. Let's do three, zero. So this is going to be the third row. So it's going to be here. And it's going to be zero across. So it's going to be the value right at the start here. So three, zero is going to be equal to one. Now, really quick, r has to be less than n. Otherwise, the value won't exist. So for example, let's consider four, five. So this is going to be the fourth row, so it's going to be, remember, this is the zero row, so zero, one, two, three, four. And it's going to be the fifth value across, so it's going to be zero, one, two, 
three, four. Remember this at the start here is zero. And then five. But as you can see, there is no value here. This goes outside Pascal's, tri Pascal's triangle. There is no value here. So therefore, it doesn't exist. There is no value for uh, which it is four, five. It's an error. It doesn't work. Using this notation, we can actually find the values without even looking or using the triangle, but we can use a formula instead. This is um, useful as it is a lot quicker than writing out the whole triangle each time to find a value. The formula is that for this notation, it is equal to n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. If you don't know what this exclamation mark means, it means factorial, and if you don't know what it means, the number has to be an integer, and when it has an exclamation mark next to it, you multiply it by all of the integers less than it. So, for example, 5 factorial, with this exclamation mark next to it, is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And if you put that into a calculator, that is equal to 120. So 5 factorial is equal to 120. So for example, let's find 5, 2 using the formula. So we sub 5 and 2 is an n as n and r respectively. And if we do this, this is going to be 5 factorial over 2 factorial 5 minus 2 factorial. To get the factorial sign on your calculator you press shift and then the x minus 1 button and this gives out the explanation uh, uh, factorial sign and if you put this into a calculator this equation it will give you out the value of 10 and as you can see by looking at the Pascal's triangle uh, for 5 2 so it's going to be the fifth row so it's 0 remember this is 0 row 1 2 3 4 5 and then it's going to be 2 across so it's going to be 0 1 2 so it's going to be 2 across and as you can see this is the value that you get out the formula is more useful for bigger values where it would take ages to draw Pascal's triangle um, out Another way of defining values on Pascal's triangle is writing it like this, n, c, r, with the n up here and the r down here. Uh, this can also sometimes just be written uh, with the n and the r as normal as n, c, r, like this. This is the exact same thing. Both of these mean the same thing, and this is just the exact same thing as n, r. This is just a different way of writing it. So, for example... 4C2, which again, as I said, can also sometimes uh, be written as 4C2, like this with the 4 and the 2, just as normal, is equal to just 4, 2. This is just a different way of writing it. So 4C2 is equal to the fourth row, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, fourth row, and it's the second value across. So this is 0 across, this is 1 across, this is 2 across, so therefore 4C2 is the second value across on the fourth row, so it is equal to 6. Now the class with calculator can be used to find any value on Pascal's triangle using the NCR notation. On your calculator, above the divide button, you'll see that it says NCR. If you press shift and then you press the divide button, you will actually get this C symbol, which is the C used in NCR. Because of this feature, you can find any value you want on Pascal's triangle almost instantly if you understand how to use the NCR notation. So for example, let's say that we need to find 5C3, or again it could be written as 5C3 with the N and the uh, R as normal. We can do this by putting 5 into the calculator, then pressing shift and then the divide button to get the C symbol, and then just put 3 next to it. And if you press equals, if you press equals on this, it is going to be equal to 10. And if we look at the Pascal's triangle, we will indeed see that the fifth row, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the third value across, so 0, 1, 2, 3, the third value of cross is 10. So therefore we do see that uh, the fifth row value, three values across, is 10. Let's do this for a higher value. Let's do it for 9C 
5 and this is equal to so if we put it into our calculator and put in 9 and then put in the C symbol using shift and then divide and then put in 5 it will give out the value of 126 and if you did enough rows of Pascal's triangle you will see that it is that value this is a really useful way to find values uh, using your calculator like this due to it being really really quick and I highly recommend getting use to how to do this so why are we even talking about Pascal's triangle? Well, what's interesting about Pascal's triangle is that it mirrors the coefficients of brackets with powers. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's take, for example, a plus b to the power of n, and let's vary the value of n. So a plus b to the power of 0 is equal to 1, as when you put anything to the power of 0, it's always equal to 1. a plus b to the power of 1 is just equal to a plus b, we just write it normally without the 1. a plus b squared is equal to a plus b times a plus b, which um, if you do the expansion is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. a plus b to the power of 3 is equal to, I'm just going to write the answer to save space and time, but it's just expanded brackets. a plus b cubed is equal to a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. You can just verify this if you want by just expanding a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. And then a plus b to the power of 4 is equal to a plus b times a plus b times a plus b times a plus b, which is equal to a to the power of 4 plus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared plus 4ab cubed plus b to the power of 4. And as you can see, the coefficients match the rows of Pascal's triangle. So here it's 1 and it's 1 here. The coefficients of a and b here are 1 and 1 and it's 1 and 1 here. The coefficients here are 1, 2 and 1 and it's 1, 2 and 1 here. The coefficients here are 1, 3, 3 and 1 and it's 1, 3, 3 and 1 here. And the coefficients here are 1, 4, 6, 4 and 1. And here it's 1, 4, 6, 4 and 1. One. And the power of the bracket is equal to the row that matches in Pascal's triangle. So here the power is 0 and this is the 0th row. Here it's uh, to the power of 1 and this is the first row. And here it's to the power of 2 and this is the second row. And if this, we see this pattern all the time if we go further and expand more brackets as well. So here's the expansion for a plus b to the power of 4. So we can see the patterns for the coefficients that it matches uh, Pascal's triangle. But what about the other parts of the terms, or more specifically the two other parts of each term, the a part which I've put in red and the b part which I've put in blue? Well we can see a pattern here too. For the a part, a goes down in power through each term. It starts from a to the power of 4 in the first term, then it goes down to a to the power of 3, then a to the power of 2, then down to a to the power of 1. Remember there is really a 1 here. And then it doesn't exist in the last term because it's a to the power of 0, which remember is equal to 1. And we can also see the same pattern for the b term. It's the exact same thing happens, it's just in the opposite way round. b goes up in power. It doesn't appear in the first term as it's b to the power of 0, but then it goes up to b to the power of 1, then b to the power of 2, then b to the power of 3, and then b to the power of 4 in the final term. So there are three things that make up each term. The coefficient, which is made by Pascal's triangle, the a term, which is made by going down in power, and the b term, which is made by going in the opposite direction, up in power. And now we know what makes up each term and how they all work, we can find each each term from scratch and we can use this to answer questions. So this is an exam question they could ask where we need to find the expansion of a plus b to the power of 4 from scratch. So how would we actually approach this? Well firstly the amount of terms is always equal to the power of the bracket plus 1. So here, as the power of the bracket is 4, it's going to be 4 plus 1, so therefore there are going to be 5 
terms. So as we just said, there are three parts to each term, the coefficient, the a term, and the b term. And we're going to consider these individually. So let's start with the coefficient. As we said, this will mirror Pascal's triangle. And as it's to the power of 4, it will be the fourth row of Pascal's triangle that it mirrors. So we can find the coefficients by mirroring the fourth row. And we can do this by using the calculator in the way we described the four before. The first coefficient will be the very first value on the fourth row, which will be 4C0. It's going to be the very first value, which is 0 across on the fourth row. And then the second coefficient is going to be the second value uh, on the fourth row, which will be the first one across, which will be 4C1. Then it will be 4C2. Then it will be 4 c Three, and finally, it will be 4C4. Four. Remember, there's no value for 4C5. So if you put those values into your calculator, it will be so 4C0 is equal to 1. Whenever it's uh, 0 across, whenever it's the very first value, it will always be 1. And then uh, 4C1 is equal to 4. Whenever it's uh, C1, whenever it's the um, th 1 value across, you'll, you'll find it will always be the number before the C, aka the number of the row. So it's 4 here because that's the number of the row. And then 4C2 is 6. 4C3 is 4, and 4C4 is 1. These are the coefficients, and we're going to lay them out like this. And then we're going to multiply each coefficient by the next part of each term. Now let's consider the second part, which is the A part. As you said before, this will go down in power. So it will start with A to the power of 4. By the way, the first power here will always be the power of the bracket. The power of the bracket is 4, so it's a to the power of 4, and then the next term is going to be a to the power of 3, then a to the power of 2, then a to the power of 1, then a to the power of 0, and then we're going to multiply this by the next part in each term. And then finally, let's consider the b part. This will go up in powers. So it will start from b to the power of 0, always start from b to the power of 0, then it's b to the power of 1, then b to the power of 2, then b to the power of 3, then b to the power of 4. This ends in b to the power of 4, the power of the bracket um, as well. Um, really quick, what you'll notice for each individual term is that the powers add up to the power of the bracket. So here it's 4 and 0, and this adds up to the power of the bracket, which is 4. Here it's 3 and 1, and these powers add up to the power of the um, bracket, which is 4. And this is the case for all of them. The powers in each term add up to the power of the bracket. So now we just need to figure out uh, the value of each term by multiplying them together and simplifying. So this is so the first one we're going to do equals for all of these by multiplying these all together. So it's 1 times a to the power of 4 times b to the power of 0. Remember, b to the power of 0 is 1, because anything to the power of 0 is 1. So this is just going to be a to the power of 4. Then it's going to be 4 times a to the power of 3 times b to the power of 1, which is going to be 4a to the power of 3 b is power to the 1, but remember, we don't write that. And it's 6 times a to the power of 2 times b to the power of 2, which is 6a squared b squared. And it's going to be 4 times a to the power of 1 times b to the power of 3, which is 4 a, and we don't write the power uh, of 1, b cubed, and then it's going to be 1 times a to the power of 0 times b to the power of 4, a to the, times, uh, to the power of 0 is 1, so this is going to be b to the power of 4. And now we have all the terms, and we just need to write out all of the terms together as an expression. It's going to be a to the power of 4, we're just writing these down, plus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared plus 4ab cubed plus b to the power of 4. And this is the answer. So this is how I solve these questions when they give me uh, something to expand something with a large power binomially. They give you a formula in the formula booklet as well in order to solve these two, but I always find it a lot easier to lay it out like this term by term in this style here, but you may find it easier to use that formula. And this is really what you need to take from this video in terms of what they can ask you in exam, how to expand brackets 
binomially. The Pascal's triangle is needed for you to understand how to do this, obviously, but I've never seen them a question I've never seen them ask a question solely on Pascal's triangle.